Hey guys, if you'd like to see how I turn this piece of paper into three different pinks, keep watching. Hey guys, it's Sergio here. So today we are going to be looking at layering dyes and how I can create a beautiful layered flower using only one colour of cardstock. I hope you enjoy. So first step that we are going to do is this is going to be our middle colour. So I'm going to cut this into three, big enough for our for our roses. Now the simplest step first, we'll take our middle rose, which is the one with the middle amount of coverage. And we're going to pop that through our die cutting machine, like so. I love this little mini die cutting machine. Don't get me wrong, I love my big A4 Gemini that's automatic, but this is great for doing little things. Using a full A4 machine to cut one thing at a time is frustratingly tedious, shall we say. Let's try and get all the bits out of this. Come on, you little piece. <laughs> no. <laughs> why, why are you running away from me? Haha, <laughs> got you. Right, so let's pop out the bits that we don't need. Okay. So there is our middle piece. I'll pop these in my recycling bin. Right, tea ho so then we're going to have this piece and this piece. So our piece that's going to be the lightest, there are a couple of ways you can lighten cardstock. I, today, I'm just going to use white ink. My white pigment ink on Hero Arts going to open this now you could just put this straight on the paper most definitely you could use an ink blending tool you could use an ink blending um, you could use the ink blending tool you could use a blending sponge you could use an ink dauber you could use pretty much anything really I'm thinking but I'm going to start off with Dorba and we'll see how we get on. I might swap, swatch, <laughs> switch to my blending brushes. So I'm going to grab myself a clean, is that actually clean? Yeah, it's a clean, clean Dorba. I'm just going to pick up some of the white. Very thinly, rub this all over. Now, obviously, it would be just as easy for you to have three different colours of cardstock, but I don't know about you, but when I buy cardstock, it's very rare. It does happen, but it's very rare to get a pack of three of the same kind of pink, for example. So I've got maybe four different kinds of pink. What have I got? So I've got, so in my pink drawer, I have this pink, I have the light pink, I have this middly pink, but they do not go well together. And that's the downside of it. Whereas with this, because this, it's, um the same paper you're just making it lighter and darker you know that the shades are going to go well together that's still a tiny bit damp so i'm just going to dry it ever so quickly now you may need to go over this a second time it's all dependent on whether when you put this over it you can see a difference now i don't know if you can on camera but i can definitely see a difference but i am going to do one more layer just to really make sure there is a difference between 
we see the darker paper you start with, the easier there is to see a difference with the white. So, right, so there's our light and our medium. We're going to make this dark. You can do it before or after. I personally find it easier to do it after um, because I have something and I will show you. What we're going to do, I'm going to cut this out. Cut this out. Have it up. Sorry, I apologise for everything shaking with that. So let's pop our pieces out. So we are going to heat emboss this. Now, if you have the pad, it may be easier to heat emboss the piece before you cut it, but you can end up cracking um, the embossing when you put it through your die cutting machine which is why I die cut it afterwards. I have the Versamark pen, which is exactly the same, it's just in pen form, and that helps me to be able to do this without ripping it. So if you've got the pad, you can try it either way. I have the pen, so I'm lucky enough to be able to do it like this. So on the pen, you have a brush nib and a like pen nib, mark pen nib, um, and I do it exactly the same way. I've got my clear embossing here because we don't want it to be a different colour, we just want it to be darker. And if you clear emboss something, it will become darker. So, grab that, grab my little spoon from the lid, and we're just going to do a little bit at a time. So, I'm just going to hold here. I'm just going to do a little bit at a time because this will dry. You do want to make sure that you have got the embossing powder everywhere while it is still quite damp. So I'm just going to go around the central piece. making sure it's all covered. The lid on here. And then we can sprinkle on our embossing powder, making sure we've covered everywhere. Do it a little bit more. So basically, I'm going to keep hold of this petal. I'll carry on doing the rest. So I'm just going to repeat that process with the rest of the rose, just running over it with the pen, dabbing it into the embossing powder, making sure everything is covered, carrying on doing the next bit. The brush is not as juicy as the ink pad, so you don't want to try and do the whole thing and then attach the powder because you will struggle with it drying out, which is why I'm doing it in small sections. And then right at the end, I'm just holding it with my uh, pokey tool so that I don't cover it in my finger oils and then doing the last layer. And then we're just gonna heat emboss that with the uh, heat gun. Give it a second, let it warm right up because you want it to be nice and warm when you start. And then once it's reached temperature, you can just emboss your piece very quickly without any problems. I absolutely love how this worked out. Um, but you can use the pad, don't forget that. Let's pop this underneath. There is enough of a change, I think, 
to only need to do one layer. Okay, so we are back. So I'm going to show you how I used this three part layering die with one colour of paper. And we made a three tone rose, which is awesome. If I could just ask you to give this video a big thumbs up if you have enjoyed it and to consider subscribing if you're not already a subscriber. If you're already a subscriber, you're amazing. I love you. Thank you so much for all your support. If you have any ideas or any questions or any techniques you'd like me to try, please leave them down in the comments. And let's reveal our card. So here is our finished card. So I did a thank you card. Now I use this stamp set, which I've taken out of the plastic I'm hoping is less glary which is Creative Key Workers Thank You. They bought out a set of four or five um, stamp sets for the pandemic and everything that was going on. And this one is about key workers, so you've got a lot of things in there. And I really liked this sort of brush lettering, thank you. And then the for being there. So that's what I used as the sentiment on there. I've not put anything inside because as a thank you notelet, it's nice to be able to just write inside it. So. There we've got that. I've just added a few little pink and purple pearls to match our pink and purple flower. I did exactly the same process with the purple. I used the normal colour for the central layer. I covered one layer in white pigment ink and dried that and that was the base layer. And then I heat embossed clear, heat embossed the top layer. Now the, oddly enough, I thought the difference would be more obvious on the purple, but I, in real life, it's more obvious on the pink. I'm not sure what it is on camera, you'll have to let me know. But I feel like the, um... The pink is definitely more obviously three tone. The purple is more subtle. And then I just added these green flourishes just to sort of give the card some flow. So there we go. Thank you very much for being there for me, as you all are all the time. Um, thank you very much for watching. Keep crafting, guys, and I'll see you all soon. Bye.